what YouTube and welcome back to another episode of the Zone TV Movie Entertainment with me, your host Jonathan, once again bringing you my thoughts and review for Marvel's Black Panther. Finally got to see it, and wow, I've been waiting my whole life to see a Black Panther movie. I mean, aside from Doctor Strange, Black Panther is one of my top favorites. I mean, top four all-time Marvel heroes. I mean, obviously number one is always going to be Spider-Man. Then Black Panther, then Doctor Strange, and then I think I have like Wolverine around there too. But still, anyway, Black Panther was a film I've been looking forward to. And when we first got to see Black Panther, T'Challa, played by uh, Chadwick Boseman, we saw him in Civil War. And it felt like they just grabbed him out of the comic book, grabbed him out of the cartoons, just put him into the movies, digitized him a little bit more to make him real realistic, and we got Black Panther. And... He was awesome. I mean, seeing the prince at the time, the prince of Wakanda, and if you know Wakanda, it's a, it's a secret African country that's inside, obviously, Africa, where technology there is pretty much more advanced than anything, maybe even more advanced than Asgard itself, because obviously, in Wakanda, the most valuable thing they have is vibranium. Now, if you don't know what vibranium is, it's one of the most strongest metals known to man. It's what Captain America's shield is made of, and then eventually turns, in the comic books, eventually is turned into adamantium, which is helps Wolverine do his thing. But that's another, that's in another universe, so that's not gonna happen anytime soon. So we should, we just got vibrated. So in this movie, King, King T'Chaka, we all know he died in Civil War after that big, um, United Conference thing that they had in Civil War. Spoiler if you didn't see the movie. So now we are and now in Black Panther we are here to see King T'Challa become the king. Or oh, he was Prince, now he's the king and basically seeing him become what he's meant to be. And when you see the world that Ryan Coogler created for Black Panther, it was it was awesome. And I, I'm not gonna give spoilers away here, but um it blew me away. This movie kind of reminded me of what would a live action, human style Lion King movie would be. And pretty much this is what this movie is. I mean, seeing King T'Challa basically being Simba and basically getting the throne and have to deal with not only having the responsibility of a whole nation, but also having the responsibility of the Black Panther and being the protector of Wakanda, and, you know, the, the people protecting the vibranium. And it was great. Chasmine Boseman as Chitala was amazing. He was great in this role. I think he was born to play this character and he did a fantastic job. I mean, we had new Nupini Nyong'o was in this movie. She was great. She plays um, his love interest. And then we have a whole bunch of other lovely african-american women in this in this movie and boy oh boy it, wow these people were great every one of them were amazing i mean his bodyguards in this movie makes me feel like yeah i would never want to mess with him you know his bodyguards make like the amazons amazons look like nobodies it, it was, they, they were great i mean from like even his little sister in this movie which apparently obviously in the marvel universe she is the smartest person on the planet. I mean, she's smarter than Tony Stark. They already acknowledge that. And she actually helps uh, T'Challa, you know, with the technology, with the vibranium in his suit and other things that, you know, he might need to do his thing. And she was great. I, I, I forgot the actress's name who plays her, but she was very good. So I can't wait to see her at other movies because she was actually very good in this movie. So we have two villains in this movie. And, um... I gotta say, the villains really worked as well. Normally, when you have two or three villains, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It depends on how you use them right, right? You have Andy Serkis coming back as Claw. Now, the last time we saw Claw, he was in Age of Ultron, he lost his hand, and, and you know, he was obsessed of getting vibranium and smuggling it out of the country and making profits out of it. Because in, in the Marvel Universe, vibranium is worth a lot of money, especially in the black market deal. So he comes back, Andy Serkis, um, as um, Claw. He was great. Um, then we have Michael B. Jordan in this movie. Now, when you first meet Michael B. Jordan's character, <clears throat> you think, eh, 
Okay, he's a, he's a cool little side character. I get it. When you watch him throughout the rest of the movie, um, I think he's in par with Loki. I mean, this guy had depth to him. I mean, he had some weird layers to him. And then when you really understand his character and his motivation for what he does in this movie, you're like, yeah, I kind of feel for him, you know? I kind of feel for what, what, what he's been going through and why he had to do this and why he had to do that to get to this point. I don't want to spoil it, but when you watch it and you get what he, he, who he is and what he becomes, and then you're like... You root for him, but then you like you you boo, you boo him at the same time because you know what he does is kind of despicable and it's kind of crazy. But um, yeah, he reminded me a lot of Loki because you know when Loki when you first meet him, you know he's that guy who's just trying to get the approval of his father. You know, you know I'm here too, Dad. You know I want to be the king. You know I want to. You you can't just let Thor be in charge. That's what I felt with Michael B. Jordan's character when you first see him. You get what he's doing. And then again, you're like, okay, maybe you're taking it too far, man. But yeah, it was great. I thought Michael B. Michael B. Jordan did a great job with this character. And right now, I think he sits as my second favorite Marvel villain of all time right now. So, I mean, obviously, we have to wait for Thanos when he comes out. And But so far, villains-wise, you know, they're doing a pretty good job. We got a pretty good job with Vulture. And now with uh, Killmonger, that's what his name is. So, so far, two for two. Hopefully, they can keep this momentum and giving some more good villains because, you know, Marvel villains besides Loki haven't been pretty good for their track record. But anyway, um, what else about this movie um, that I liked? Um, the visuals were great. Action scenes were cool. Um, like I said, the story was great. It kind of felt like a watching Lion King, like a, like a, a different take on what a Lion King live action human version of the movie would be like. But that was kind of cool. <clears throat> Uh, but there was some stuff here I didn't like, obviously. Um, I mean, no movie is perfect, but um, <coughs> excuse me. There's a there's a scene in this movie where I'm like, okay, I get where they're going with it, but it feels like every time this certain scene happens in any kind of movie, and then another scene that kind of leads into it comes happens again, comes around the circle, and then. You're like, yep, yeah, I saw that coming right away. Once the scene happened, yep, yeah, I knew where I know where the scene is gonna go next. It kind of felt cliche with it, but um, yeah, that was one of the negatives. And there was another scene where there's a fight scene that kind of felt a little too CG. I mean, the CG all around is pretty good, but you know, this CG kind of felt like it's right in your face. Like you can tell just by looking at it. Like if you have an eye for this kind of stuff. You could tell how bad that CG was. They couldn't just clear it up a little bit better, but still. Overall, I thought this movie worked in so many ways. The characters were great. Story structure was great. Um, humor was fun. And um, I, I just thought it was a fun movie. Another negative I have about this movie, though. One other one. Um, I wish a certain a certain actor in this movie had more, more screen time. When you see... The movie, if you haven't seen the movie yet, you know who I'm talking about when you watch it. You're going to make, oh, because he has a cool character. And technically, he's supposed to be in the mythos of the Black Panther mythology. I was shocked what happened to him. But, um, yeah, his screen time was cut short. But, um, yeah, um, other than that, I thought this movie was great. So, I do highly recommend watching this movie. If you're a Marvel fan, you're going to like this movie no matter what. You might, you might have problems with it. That's cool. If you don't like it, that's cool, too. But, um, yeah, I, I thought I really enjoyed enjoyed it, and um, it was great. The after credits, there's two of them, so stick to those, watch them. They're pretty, they're not too important, but they're kind of like, okay, I get where they're going next with these, with these movies, so there you go with that. And no, I'm not going to give a score. I don't do that anymore. I decided not to do scores anymore because there's no point. But, um, yeah, I highly recommend watching this movie. I really enjoyed it a lot. In my top, probably my top five favorite Marvel films as at this moment, but I don't know which order it is. It may be last right now. I don't know. I might have to re. There's so many Marvel movies, so I gotta reorganize it. So, um, but yeah, highly recommend go checking out Black Panther. Give it a shot and stay tuned for more. And leave me a comment below and let me know what you guys thought about it. If you've seen it, if you liked it, let me know what you liked about it. If you didn't like it, what could have been improved, let me know in the comments. 
click that bell to subscribe and thank you very much and have a good day